Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. Today, we're actually going to take a look at three 5060 Ti's. Now, they're all the 16 gigabyte models because, as you may have heard in the press, it's become uh, quite difficult for us to be able to get a hold of the 8 gigabyte ones. Um, anyway, and I have a range, but I'm actually kind of happy to say that I do have an MSRP card here from Zotac, but then I've also got an MSI one here, which kind of sits sort of in the middle, and then I've got an Asus Tough. I say kind of in the middle, because it's kind of size-wise, but I don't know uh, where any of the prices, well, actually, that's a fib. So the Zotac is MSRP. The Asus, they're saying, is probably going to be 30 to 40 over MSRP. I kind of think that's optimistic. Uh, and I know this is not the MSRP card from uh, MSI. So I'm going to say these two are probably going to end up being about the same. But only time will tell once they land in the shops and stuff, because we never know at the, uh, the actual time. Now, uh, just to cover the bases with the 5060 Ti straight from the get-go, they don't particularly use a great deal of power. Um, but I do have a range of power connectors. The two higher end ones or non MSRP cards have the 12 VH cable, but I know a lot of you will be incredibly happy to see an eight pin on uh, the Zotac. The Zotac is also the most teeniest, tiniest one, which means it's gonna fit in a huge range of cases. Uh, just to see them stacked up, you can see it's effectively, it's not much bigger than an ITX board in uh, reality. And I do think you would get that in an ITX case as well. The Asus one is the largest. It has the largest PCB, although they have put the uh, 12VH power cable right on the very end. Um, while we're talking about aesthetics, uh, the lighting on the uh, Tough is only on the back. The MSI does have a uh, little bit of lighting on the end, it is just the badge. Uh, but then there is some underneath, and I do kind of like the frosted nature of the uh, MSI card. But the bit that I liked the most about it was the holographic um, area for the dragon. It catches in the light at certain times. It's just really nice. It's kind of lighting or colour in your rig without actually having to have light there and I do genuinely like it. Um, the uh, Zotac is plain but rugged. It looks like the tough card that I reviewed at the start when the uh, 80s and 90s first come out but it is all plastic. It's not aluminium. The uh, back plate is metal and it is just dainty, but looks really nice. And it's kind of their brand identity now. Now for overall performance, uh, it's kind of a mixed bag. It's not a great deal for us to be able to pick out with these from the 4060. Now, uh, when you look in the graphs, we've not removed the 4060 out of the graphs. And don't forget, you can go and have a look on the OC3D website if you want to clo a closer look pick more graphs apart. So please do click through and go and have a look. There's no 4060 in there, we didn't test it at the time. Um, we, but we've covered as many bases as we possibly can do. With this, we've done 1440 and 4K. 4K, weirdly, fairly capable, but we'll cover that in a little bit more detail. But 1440 is probably the sweet spot for these for reasonable amounts of frames. Now, uh, there isn't a great deal to pick them apart between the 4060. I kind of see this as being a replacement for the 2060, maybe the 3060. But the 3060 is a very clear cutoff point. Because if you've got a 3070, don't really think you should be looking at these. Now, I know there's always people going to say, oh yeah, but people won't be looking at that. I'm just trying to cover bases. Uh, you know, trying to give you a very clear cut line in the sand so that you know where you should be looking at with them. Um, with an eight uh, gigabyte card though, that's going to be for very, you know, much lower end systems. Um, 80, uh, sorry, 1080 screens maybe at a push. And even then they are going to be uh, getting a bit limited. Now, the only real thing that these do bring to the table is going to be MFG, multi-frame gen. I know a lot of you don't like it. Some of you are very vocal about not liking it. Um, but 
The other side of it is, in the grand scheme of things, DLSS and the new DLSS and uh, the way it works, especially on these cards now, is significantly better than it would have been with the 4060s. But it, it, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a reason to buy a card, but it is supported by way more games than I would like to kind of, not necessarily like to admit, but when you do compare it with the red team, the integration with DLSS is far more widespread uh, than it is with the AMD variant. And that's not something I say and enjoy about either. It's just, it's much more mature and it is definitely, like I personally, if DLSS was available in a game, I would enable it. I just stick it on balanced and uh, multi frame gen or frame gen is just something that you decide about your own preferences later. But also let's face facts. If you're looking at buying a card, around this area because these are going to be 399 and up so this one is going to be 399 these are probably going to be 450 maybe a little bit more but if you are looking at cards like this and let's say you did want to play alan wake and the difference between you being able to play it comfortably was multi-frame gen or not and this is your price point then you're going to turn it on aren't you like Yes, you're going to hope things are going to mature and you're going to hope things do maybe get better. But if it was the difference between you playing at 30 frames per second or 65 frames per second, you're going to have it on. Um, so, you know, sometimes we have to be, you know, not um, hardware snobs about it. And remember that people might be buying the best that they possibly can do and just want the best performance that they can get. Sure, yes, we would prefer them to be real frames but i think the software side of it is just going to become far more widespread with these but here's the weird thing if these get above 450 and i do mean get above 450 i actually know that oc uk in the uk so overclockers have a gamewood 5070 available on launch day for just over i think it was 507 pounds which makes these a very gray area prospect because at that point, if you are like, what have I got to do, Tom? I'm going to say, spend a bit extra and nip up to the 5070. Now, I know lots of people don't like the 5070, and then you do get into the realms of, oh, but what about the 9070? And, but we're going to end up with arguments forevermore. And that's definitely the sort of thing where I think we need a very interactive, let's have a chat, live stream, chat in a pub, that sort of thing. But that makes these a, a big grey area. But if you made me uh, definitely pick between the two, because we'll move the MSRP one away, if you made me pick between the two, I'm going to buy this one because of the looks and not because of the fact it's got an Asus badge on it, because you could put the MSI badge on it, you could put the Zotac badge on it. I'm going to end up buying that one to put in my rig because it was that little bit cooler. It does look that little bit better and it's probably going to have slightly better longevity because there's a lot more of it whereas you're squeezing it in with these but and this is the big but if you don't care about the way it looks and you just want the frames i'm gonna say buy the zotac because if you don't care about everything else there's not really a great deal of point in buying these yes they might be marginally better but you could overclock that one yourself uh, it's going to be quite easy. It does exactly what you want it to do for less money. And it also, unless you want something to fill your system up with, it's going to be something that you're going to be able to fit in smaller places. If you've saved the money on the lighting, and neither of these have got particularly great lighting in the grand scheme of things, um, and uh, I wouldn't flinch about putting that in a rig. The only thing I would do with something like this, unless I'd already built my rig, is I'd probably end up with something slightly smaller so that it didn't look lost. Because if you put this in an ITX board and then in an ITX case, it is going to look teeny tiny and it's going to look way cheaper than it was. And at that point, it kind of gets to the point where you might need to think about bumping into one of these. Now, as you've seen, there's been performance going up, power results, temperatures, um, it's all there, but overall, 
with the 5060 Ti, I actually do wish it was just the 5060. Like they took exactly what this is, took the Ti away from it, made it a bit cheaper, and then that was it. And I wish they did that with the 5070 Ti as well. I literally wish they'd taken the price off, made it a bit cheaper, bumped it down the stack a little bit. I also think that the way they used to do the TIs and the, you know, all the different sub-brands after you've had like the 2080, 2080 Super, 2080 Ti, all of that sort of thing. I think the way that they staggered it before was better. Now the fact that we're getting TIs and the, the normal cards right on top of each other, I don't really see the point. It greys the market out too much and we don't get that upgrade path later. Like I think the TI should have been six or eight months time. Um, I think the Super should have been that little bit longer just so that you've got like the upgrades because everything all at once doesn't make any sense because all we ever end up saying is buy the MSRP card and uh, it, it, these ones get far too close to then the model above it, which is why these ones now I'm like, if these do go above 450, go to Overclockers and buy that 5070. Like, no brainer. Don't even bother with these. Go to that game with. Um, so it kind of makes a reviewer's life that little bit difficult because a lot of the time there aren't very many MSRP cards, but these are the ones that we're going to tell you if you're on a budget to go and buy. And then when you get to these ones, you're kind of looking for the cheaper ones from the model above again. Um, but anyway... If you made me buy one with my own money right now, it would be this one, if it was in a small rig. And if it wasn't in a small rig, it would be this one. This one just gets a bit lost. And price-wise, if they were the same, it's that bit smaller, it's that bit slower. I don't particularly like the lighting. It's very mediocre. Uh, and also, yet again, MSI didn't even have a price for me at launch. And it, it's, it's getting to the point now where how am I meant to review a product without actually being told? So we have to guess. So that's why we put it in the same bed as this one. And it's just not as good in the grand scheme of things. Um, so, yeah, it's, I think it's, people might say it's unfair, I don't know. But it's just getting a bit... <sighs> um, anyway, can you tell that I really was not fussed about this launch? Because I'm really not. Like, the 5060 Ti, it doesn't excite me. Like, I can see it's got a place, but it's kind of like, uh, you know, there's so many things where people are going to moan about the 8 and gigabyte, going to moan about this, pricing. <sighs> I don't know. Let's hope the 5060... Uh, has that sweet spot edge. I mean, we don't know about pricing yet, but if it's if the MSRP for the um, 5060 isn't 299, then it's going to be a bit of a difficult one to review because if it comes in at 349 or something, it's going to be way too close to the rest of these and it's just going to be an absolute pain in the bum up to be able to do it. The only thing I can say at the moment is because of tariffs and politics and stuff at the moment, uh, it does mean that for, for the first time in a long time, GBP prices are below the dollar prices, which are crazy, but it does make us feel that little bit special over here in Great Britain land. Anyway, I know this has been a bit of a waffle video, but in the grand scheme of things, this was one that I really wanted to just be a chat because it's not exciting i feel sorry for the vendors trying to uh, bring cards in for this if i'm if i'm honest um and i think right now the thing i'm really looking forward to annoyingly enough is to see what happens with the 5060 and the 9060 because that is the one we should all be watching because that is going to be the next big face off but if you've got my thoughts on these, I hope that may have helped you decide. It probably hasn't because I still, I'm not sure. But please leave your thoughts and comments underneath. And thank you very much. Don't forget, head over to the website if you would like to go and see more info. There's lots more stuff coming for you soon.